Hello, and welcome to another episode of Making Sense of Social Media. My name is Lori Clausen, and we have another dynamic guest today. His name is Matthew Dorrington. He is coming to us today from the UK, from just outside of London, and I can't wait number one for his accent. <laughs> I mean, who's kidding who here? <laughs> he is an SEO specialist. I'm excited to talk with him about the combination of content marketing, digital marketing in general, and what SEO means in that regard. You're going to love this episode. Welcome, Matthew. Thank you so much for being here today. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to those watching and listening? Sure, my pleasure. Uh, my name is Matthew. I run a digital marketing agency, but I'm, I'm an SEO at heart called Blue Moxie. And we're based in the UK and um, specialize in hospitality businesses. Okay, so like hotels, resorts, that kind of thing. Exactly, yeah. So um, we, we've got a wide range of customers. Um, it's everything to do with alcohol, effectively. And it's because of my love for beer and stuff. So one of my <laughs> biggest clients is a, a brewery and the beauty of oh, okay. that is you get free beer and, and that that's really why i'm here um <laughs> and alongside that we've got like stuff like uh football clubs which you guys would call soccer clubs um we've got stuff that supports businesses in hospitality for example like uh, vape machines that would go in a bar so people can buy vapes and it, people that clean pipes um, in pubs and people that provide services to the pub so it's not only b2c but b2b as well so really really diverse but overall supporting the hospital hospitality industry i love your passion it's it's infectious <laughs> That's it's wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So uh, as you know, this podcast is intended to help kind of the small business owner who's just really struggling with social and digital. And I love that we're going to um, weave SEO into that today as well. So um, what, in your opinion and your expertise, Matthew, is um, are some of the main goals of putting out content onto social media? And how does SEO work its way into that? Yeah. So content is king um as most people would say some people would say content's dead but uh most people was some people would say it's, it's king and that, that's the camp i am in for me content is what educates your audience to what you do and brings you it brings customers to you so no matter what you do if you're a local restaurant or if you're a supplier if you're a law firm even it, it, that content educates so you would you would talk about a subject that your customers would ultimately be googling in the first place and mm -hmm. so that content then becomes shareable and that content gets put on social media which people will opt might see by luck looking for your service and to come through and see see about your business and that's where content really drives traffic through to you and you, by educating your audience they begin to trust you. And so before they even get to your contact button or book a table or uh, buy your product, they've they've already decided they trust you because you've given them advice that has worked or advice that has, that has settled their mind on an issue that they may have have. Do you think that personality and like actual humanness works into that as well? Like I, I know... I mean, you can be a great educator and give great advice, but if the, I don't know, there's no connection there, do you think that's important as well? Yeah, ab absolutely. So it's not all just about the contact. Uh, sorry, the um, the content is the contact after the content. So that Ooh. initial conversation you have with people will often set the tone of that relationship going forward. If it's a lighthearted, hey, how's it going? Tell me about your business kind of conversation overall over what's your budget what's your time scales heavy hard questions it's going to be a completely different conversation and that works b2c as well customer calls up the restaurant and says hey you got a table and it's like well how much are you going to spend um it's yeah. a complete complete different conversation so yeah personality is key and being friendly and supporting your customers yeah for sure so how do you how, in your opinion, in your experience, would you determine when something has been effective or not? I mean, obviously, it, like in your um, genre of of re restaurants and entertainment and that kind of thing, um, obviously people are going to go out regardless. But 
how do you how do you measure and determine the effectiveness of what you're putting on the internet and on social? So there's many ways to track um, how different campaigns work. So within an SEO campaign, within a social media campaign, there's going to be many elements. So for example, with all of my clients, uh, we would talk about having three main goals we want to achieve this month. And out of those three main goals, that creates three campaigns. Those three campaigns, mm -hmm. then we work out what do we want to achieve. So for argument's sake, it might be a football club, they want to sell more tickets. Um, and then their second campaign is they want, they've got an overstock of scarves. So we need to push scarves out. And then the third option might be um, post-match entertainment. We've got a singer in the bar every evening after the games. So we want to get people in there drinking. There's our three campaigns. And fr mm. from that, we'll be able to set KPIs. So for example, the tickets is very much its bottom line. How many tickets have actually been purchased? Then the scarves, bottom line again, how many scarves have been purchased? And then the bar afterwards, that again is bottom line, but bottom line on alcohol sales. So mm -hmm. that tells us how, how popular that, that event's been. But then we move it into the digital size, we look, side, we look at the KPIs. So um, we would look at the cost we're spending on adverts to achieve that through PPC means, the time and SEO cost put into creating those web pages, creating those contact forms, and then obviously creating the social media posts, all of that kind of stuff. And we put that cost versus the co uh, the amount the business has made, and it gives you your return on investment. And that's the, the key uh, KPIs. Now, you might get stuff that's more B2B. And when then that, that's not based on bottom line, that's based on leads. And so your KPI mm -hmm. would be around um, how many people have actually contacted you. And then it's over to the business side to have a further conversation with the client and say, well, what's your conversion rate? How many of these 20 contacts have actually spoke to you? And so that would tell us how effective we're being. So overall, it is that black number at the bottom of your account sheet. But um, there is many elements above which we can give you an idea of how you're performing. It sounds complicated, but it's not. And I really want to encourage the small business owner and the person who is potentially doing all of this on their own that this is very doable and it's it's not that difficult when you follow a series of steps. Matthew, in your opinion, what would be like step one to step five kind of thing? I mean, you don't have to have sure, five steps, sure. but so, you know what I so mean? Like, Yeah, I would work backwards though from your final goal. Um, okay. So if we if we think of if we don't think of step one, we start with step five. What do we want to achieve and then break that down into micro goals and mm -hmm. metrics that you can see? So it might be something as simple as gaining a thousand followers on social media. Now, how, how are we going to do that? That's our goal. Um, we're going to run a competition. That would be step one. Then step two might be an email campaign. Step three might be a campaign on another social platform to bring some of your followers across. Mm -hmm. Step four might be to write a blog, um, giving some people a reason to follow you, exclusive content, um, exclusive offers that are only available on your Facebook page versus your Instagram page give every people a reason to be there so it's it's not there's no kind of one one kind of package for everybody we yeah. need we need to look at an individual case and think about what do we want to achieve and work backwards from there the types of small business owners that i coach and that i interact with on a daily basis they're so ingrained in in the passion of what they're doing because they that's why they started a small business in the first place that they don't really always know what to do when it comes to successful digital marketing. So I'm so glad you're giving some sound and, and solid advice here. Thank you so much. So this is a question that I'm, I'm really intrigued to get your answer on, but sure. how do you balance the quality versus quantity debate that surrounds social and digital marketing content? So I quality is more valuable than quantity. So, for example, we're in the AI age where people have discovered chat GPT and stuff like that. And it just churns out a load of content that is not quality and is of no value to anybody. And that the average human being can read and go, yeah, that's been written by a computer. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, the one word that really stands out for me that chat GPT always chucks out, moreover. 
it always continues on the words it goes oh moreover or therefore and the <laughs> you can tell the language and nobody's that enthusiastic when they introduce a blog and it's just not <laughs> natural yeah. and so that that's it's always a big giveaway and for me uh but that might be a bias as i'm being a marketer is i read I, if i open a blog and it, it starts with it i'm like that's ai I, i'm walking away because nobody's written this nobody's taking the time to understand this instead yeah. write your blogs in first person write your blogs about in in the way of saying hey look this is my experience or tell a story that that's the massive thing hey there, there was this this person she had this problem that we resolved this problem by doing this this and this and these are the steps you need to take to achieve that also that that's a much more human way to say it rather than uh this is what we offer enthusiastic entrance and with steps below that quality, quality over quantity always i would rather one human written blog over 10 ai blogs it's going to get right. you more results it's going to be more shareable it's going to be more linkable other companies are going to want to link to your article if you're giving good solid advice right absolutely so someone like I don't know, Gary Vaynerchuk, who's out there saying you should be posting 50 pieces of content a day. It's just unrealistic, wouldn't you say? Um, if you've got a copywriting team behind you, write 50 <laughs> articles yeah. a day. That's amazing. I've got two full-time copywriters. Um, I'm lucky to get one article a day out of the pair of them, but, but that's because I'm sending it back. I'm, I'm demanding quality out of them. Uh, well, there you go. Exactly. So if you've got a room, you've got 100 people writing articles, you'll probably get 10 good articles out of that. My copywriters will write articles and I go, it's not good enough. And we've got articles in our archive that just would never get published or they get used for reference. And so mm -hmm. I go, hey, look, do you know what? I want an article about this. Here's a few we've written about it. Let's try and make something work. That's excellent advice. How does SEO work in terms of like your Facebook post or your Instagram? Like, does that are should keywords be integrated into your your actual social media posts? Yeah, absolutely. So in the SEO world, social media is classed as off page SEO. It literally okay. what it says in the name is SEO that points to your website from an external source off page. In addition to that, Twitter is very good, or X as it's supposed to be called, but no one will ever say that. It will, You're funny. Um, will actually has got index first. So Google doesn't always crawl every website or blog. As soon as you put a blog up, it doesn't always crawl it. But by posting on Twitter, Twitter actually submits um, your blog to search engines because so that they can rank tweets. Mm. meaning that your blog will actually get seen quicker by Google by tweeting it. Oh. So that's... everything you, you write, I didn't know you, that. Should, you should always tweet a link. Wow, I did not know that. What about Pinterest? I heard Pinterest is big on SEO. Yeah, Pinterest is great. Pinterest is really fun. Um, it, the only issue with Pinterest is generally the audience. Uh, so it, it really depends on uh, who who you're targeting um yeah. so it's normally majority female um and uh, low, uh mid 20s is the age range so if female mid 20s is your is your goal pinterest is the place to go i i use pinterest myself i think it's really good i like to visualize things especially like for doing stuff around the home um if i if i'm thinking of color schemes i put boards together of pictures and stuff from pinterest just so i can visualize things and I also do mood boards. So when I'm building a website for a client, say, I will, I'll do a mood board of different colors and different ideas and schemes and p from Pinterest. So I, I love it personally. Um, and I can see big, big need for it. And from an SEO perspective, it does rank, it does appear. That is very cool. I like how like it, everything just blends together and, and it works. Absolutely. So I have one last question for you today, Matthew. Um, how do you leverage the power of storytelling and emotion in what you're putting out into the internet and onto the socials and into absolutely. your blogs and articles? Yeah, absolutely. As I said, that first person, first person writing, always writing first person. People want you to be personable. They want to be able to connect with a person behind the screen. And so if you're mm -hmm. saying a story or even if they can visualize themselves as a person in that story. So are you a business owner that's having this trouble? But not wording it like that. You want to word it as, 
this is Sam. Sam had this issue. So that it's not about them. You're not directly addressing them. You're putting them in the shoes of another person that's seen success. And if you can back that up with a case study on top of that, even more powerful and will result in leads or sales on top of things. So even, even a product this works for. Think about influencer marketing when mm. you've got so you've got a person standing there, so they've got an issue, and this product fixes that issue, and it's been told for a story. It's powerful, and you should always leverage that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Matthew, I want to thank you so much for being here today and sharing some of your wisdom and experience with those uh, watching and listening. Why don't you go ahead and uh, let everybody know where they can find you and uh, maybe your your website or your blog or whatever you like. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So feel free to uh, connect with me on Instagram or um, on LinkedIn generally. Um, but the main place I hang out is actually Twitter or X, which will never be called, as I say. And it's just Matt Dorrington underscore. And uh, feel free to ask me any questions or reach out. I'm always happy to have a one-to-one -one with anybody that's looking for a little bit of advice. Amazing. Thank you so much, Matthew. This has been just so lovely and refreshing. And I love your passion. It's awesome. Thank you. You too. <laughs> If you struggle with knowing what to do when it comes to social media, advertising, strategizing for your success on social media, let me introduce you to me, your marketing mentor. I run a six-week group coaching program that runs only four times a year. The next onboarding is in May. So if you're interested in being with other small business owners just like you and learning everything you need to know about social media, about strategy, about content, about advertising, and all the little pieces that go together when it comes to successful digital marketing, definitely come and check out Your Marketing Mentor. I'll put a link in the description below. I look forward to welcoming you to the Marketing Mentor family. Thanks for watching.